Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So today we're going to talk about low-level formatting a HDD or an SSD drive, NVMEs, because they're usually an NVME in one of these cases, okay? This is a Thunderbolt 4 case. Um, and I also have a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 case, which is about 2,000 megabytes per second. And then we have a Western Digital uh, factory built, non-screwable, because uh, you can't mess with it. Um, one terabyte NVMe that's rated at about 1,050. Anyways, so I looked up this, I saw a video this morning on YouTube and the guy's talking about, you know, you like used drives, you know, you gotta be very careful buying used drives because, you know, and selling your used drives or selling your PC that has your drives in it because people can recover your data. Now, what he failed to mention is about low level formatting routines on Windows. There's about six steps to do it. Now, how secure that's actually going to be in the Windows environment, I couldn't really tell you. I know that Apple security goes up to basically like a level 7 security, which is like DoD and beyond, okay? And it is the most secure so that nobody can recover your crap that you've ever done. And you know, everybody's got these little weird hobbies in life, so if you don't want your files out there, you might want to make sure they're darn well secured drives when you're going to sell these drives. And when you're buying somebody else's drive, that's another thing. I mean, the most important thing about buying a used drive is getting the person to show you the health statistics of the drive. Because you don't want to buy something that's like half dead, right? So you want to know, hey, how much life is left in this drive? You know, because that determines your price more than the size of the drive, okay? Like I can buy a one terabyte um, KC3000 drive. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's rated for 7,000 by 6,000. It's Express 4. They're 120 bucks new, right? And I got a couple of them sitting up top of my Mac. One's my boot drive and one's my data drive. Now, these drives will not do a low level format um, even though they're Thunderbolt, but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to show you all of this so you really get a good in-depth understanding. So hang out for the video if you want to actually learn something here. So if I go up to my container here, uh, this is my external data drive. So it will allow me to erase it. And if I click erase, all I get is the option for giving it a name. I got my format routines so that I can use. And of course, my scheme, guide partition, master boot, or Apple partition map. Okay. Anyways, so that's all I get. I have no way of doing an actual low-level format. Now, every drive period, even on a Mac, this is Mac OS Sonoma, the default that we get here with no options for higher security is still a low-level format, but it is a quickie, kind of like Windows, right? Do you take Windows, you for, go to format a drive, and you say quick format, it's like boom, done, right? Doesn't matter how big it is, right? Then if you click on the next level, so you just uncheck the mark on Windows, it does kind of like basically a level one or maybe a level half of one kind of format. So it takes a little bit longer to do the same size drive. But if you want even more security, there's like six major steps that have to be done to get into that extra security levels, okay? Which is where you'd want to be if you're selling your PC with a drive in it, or you know, you buy somebody's drive and it's got good health stats, stats on it, sure, it's worth buying, okay, great, that's fine. Got a good drive, it's got like 90% life or 80% life left, it'll do me for a while, right? So you wanna make sure that you format that drive with the highest security possible, because anybody, because there's a lot of hackers on the planet, okay, and, um, Anybody can hide a ghost virus file onto a drive and you would never even know it's there, okay? And sometimes even just doing a regular format won't take care of that. I mean, hey, these guys are good. You know, I used to be in programming myself when I was a kid, so I know how you can do stuff, right? So you want the tightest possible security possible to guarantee that thing is absolutely naked. There is no way anything survives. And that means the top level security possible for your version of Windows or Mac OS. And it's going to be painstaking hours, depending upon the size of the drive um, and whatnot, okay? Anyway, let's do this, all right? So we know that can't be done. Now, I do have a Western Digital SSD here in a case. I've left the lid off so I can swap out drives. It's got a Type-A plug on it. We're going to plug it in here. 
we're going to see that it's here. Okay, Western Digital. We're going to click Erase, and we have security options. Okay, Level 1, which is fastest, tells you this option does not securely erase the files on the disk. A disk recovery application may be able to recover the files. I guarantee you it can. I've been there and done that. Okay, so if we go to the next level up, this does a single pass, okay, of random data and a single pass of zeros over the entire disk. It erases the information uh, used to access your files and writes over the data two times. The next one is three times. It's even more secure. DOE compliant, okay. Uh, most secure. This option writes multiple passes of zeros, ones, and random data over the entire disk. It erases the information used to access your files and writes over the data seven times. So the likelihood of anybody recovering your stuff off there is like slim to none. Okay, it's the most we've got currently, right? And you can bet that Apple will eventually give us like 10 times or even higher down the road, okay? Depending on how nutty stuff goes in the entire world. But, let's take out this drive. Now, one of the things I read on the internet was it is completely up to the manufacturer of the drive if they are going to support low-level formatting, okay? Now, it's where it gets funny because this is only a Western Digital. Now, I can take any one of these other drives, okay? I've got an Eldaloka, I've got a Kingston here, so Kingston. We know that the Kingston drive there would not allow it, okay? Now, it also doesn't matter upon the connection type. This is SATA to USB-A, but this is a Kingston drive, okay? Let's pop that up. Kingston, okay, got it, boom security options it's there okay we can do this it's a kingston okay but would it not be then that you know kingston would say you know these drives can do it uh but these other drives cannot do it okay well we know that i have two kingston kc3000s sitting in two thunderbolt cases up top okay now my third kc3000 is actually sitting uh, in my PC laptop, all right, so I can't test that again against another Kingston. However, we can play around here a little bit, all right, and let me just quickly get my screwdriver kit out. Around here someplace. Now, I'll, I'll pop the cover off on this one here. This is a Western Digital. Okay, this is sitting in my new Indomin case, otherwise known as my wow. Okay, now let's go over to the MacBook here because it at least has its ports free for this. So if we plug into here, there it is. Now it mounts, disk utility. It's got a Western Digital sitting inside. It says listed as external, so we know that. Hit erase, no options. Zip, okay. That kind of settled that one really quick. We cannot do a low level format. Is that the manufacturer? Well, the drive is made by Western Digital, okay. The case is made by a completely different company and it's a Thunderbolt 4 case. Now, the one thing I've never tried with this case is using an adapter to go from C to A to see if it'll mount. Oh, we gotta go over here to the other computer for that. Yeah, I know I ejected it improperly, just bug off. All right, so let's go back over to our, our other Mac here. And we'll plug this in to my other Mac. See if it mounts. It puts power to the drive. Oh, it mounted. Woohoo, cool, all right. And this is called an ASMT case. That's the name of the case, okay? <clears throat> it's not gonna tell us what drives in there, but we already know because we showed you. Click erase. Guess what? Now we got security options. So now we can securely do this 
for formatting to low level. Interesting. Okay, so let's quit this program. Now, I can sit here and do this back and forth all day long, okay? But what I want to do, I want to say, okay, there's the Thunderbolt drive. Uh, let's do the Western Digital. Now, this Western Digital is going to do the exact same thing, but if we plug it into type A, connection point with an adapter, this drive, come on, you should mount. Well, this drive doesn't want to mount with this adapter for some reason. Okay, so this drive actually won't mount from a C to an A conversion. Well, it's actually quite interesting. Well, it says it didn't eject properly, so it must have been. Okay, let's try this again. So let's sit for it. Ah, there it is. Okay, it does work. All right, so disk utility, my passport, erase. We have security options. Perfect, that's awesome. -o. Now, let's uh, eject this from the desktop. So we know that works. Okay, back over to the MacBook Air. Okay, plug it in, direct C connection to USB 3. And system information. No, that's not what we want. Disk utility. Western Digital, my passport. Erase. No options. Okay. I'm surprised this was not covered <laughs> on the internet. Because all the internet tells you is that it's up to the drive manufacturer. Um, and apparently it's not. It has nothing to do with whether or not the manufacturer is going to support it or not, okay? Like I said, I can bounce all my drives here all day long, okay? I've got another one here, an Oracle case. If I plug it into Type A, it's going to give me security options. If I pull this, plug it into Type C, okay? Boom, right? It's not going to give me security options, right? So it doesn't matter who makes the Darren drive, okay? It has nothing to do with that, okay? It has nothing to do with the case you're using, third party or otherwise. It has to do with your connection point. Type C or Thunder and Thunderbolt, okay, do not want to allow low level formatting, at least on the Mac, okay? Now on a Windows computer, we, we may be able to do a low level format. I will have to go to my PC later and go through that stage and try it out and see if C is supported because I have a uh, Thunderbolt Type-C port on my uh, PC as well as Type-A and we'll check that in another video because that will have to be specific to Windows, okay? But there's like six flipping steps. So I probably won't go over all that Okay, because it's going to be a pain in the butt to do it, but, and it may actually make me format a drive, whether I like it or not. So, we'll see what happens there, but we will cover that in another video. But for the Mac people out there, okay, but, uh, you know, this is how it works. You have to plug a Thunderbolt or a Type-C drive, regardless of whatever case you're using, okay, you have to have that C to A connector you got to mount the drive, and then you can format it and do a low-level format, okay? The same thing would be, like, you know, if you have a removable internal drive on your computer, okay, on a Mac, then same process. I mean, on HDDs and SSDs, you should be able to have no problem doing low-level format on an internal removable drive on a Mac. Now, soldered on... That I'm going to have to check on to see if we can actually do a low-level secure format on our internal because it is soldered on even on M1s and I will get to doing that and I'll let you guys know in another video about that sort of thing, okay? Because we're already at 15 minutes. So this gives you the information that it does not matter the manufacturer of the drive, does not matter the manufacturer of the case, 
that you're using externally, okay, it has to do with your connection point. You need to use type A. And the bigger the drive and the higher the security you choose, the longer it's gonna take. My buddy James, he did a six terabyte drive and I think it took him like three or four days, like literally 24 hours a day around the clock for about three or four days straight just to do a six terabyte. I'll have to ask him if it actually took that long or longer, but I'm pretty sure he said it took him like three or four days to do it um, before it would completely zero that drive 100%. Okay, and he went for Apple's like top security for whatever OS he was running, etc. cetera. Um, and all his computers except for one in the house is an older generation Mac, so they may have had like you know higher levels then and they've lowered it down to seven because seven is more than adequate who knows i'll ask them about it and let you guys know but that's how it's done okay so whether you're using this kind of thing where you can just put your own drives in does not matter the make i've even done it with the elder local in that case i've done it with the western digital green we have western digital drives in these cases too etc um it it doesn't make a difference you just have to have that type a connection Plug it into your Mac, either through a USB-A port or USB-C with an adapter to go A to C even. Um, that was the other thing, A to C, you know, like A to C. Can we still actually get around that? That is our last thing we're going to try. Now, this is like doubling up adapters, right? I don't even know if this is going to mount, but let's find out, okay? Let's see if it disallows us, all right? Okay, let's get in there, Pappy. Ah, plug her in. It's probably not even going to mount. Oh, yep, it did. <laughs> Wicked, man. Triple up. Um, disk utility. Yeah, and erase. And we lose our low-level format, okay? So, it must be done on type A. That is the only way it's going to happen right so which is dumb you know because apple doesn't even do type a stuff anymore but if you get yourself well they do actually do it on some of their computers but their laptops there's no more type a ports on mac laptops but there is on their desktops like the mini in the studio you definitely have type a there um <laughs> but um as far as everything else goes you can get a type c hub that has type a ports and that would do the flip for you so that you'd be able to do it that way but otherwise yeah you're kind of you know if you don't have a usb a hub uh, on your mac then you're gonna have a problem if you don't have actual usb a ports uh, you're gonna need a usb a hub okay and uh, i actually do have a hub here that uh, converts everything from c to a and uh, we would easily be able to do that and yeah, no, i unplugged it the wrong way um, and you know what? Um, I know you guys are probably like going, man, seriously? All right, we gotta know, we gotta have some fun here. Let's take out the hub, try this real quick to see just for giggles. Let's unplug the power because we have to anyways. Plug that in. And we're gonna use this drive anyway. And I gotta slide this over a little bit. Okay, that's in, should mount. Yes, allow. And disk utility, because you know this is a MacBook Air, it's an M1 by the way. And click erase, and we get security options. Done and done, there you go. Solution right there. So a Type-C to Type-A conversion hub, you can do it, and you just plug in your, your drive with a Type-A adapter, and you can format whatever you want, any way you want to make sure the data is secure. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.